I'm Kajinda Panisar from Ultrasoc, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, process of trace in, in a holistic world. So this is the order of my talk. Uh, I'm going to give you an overview, then talk about a particular kind of process of trace. In this case, it's uh, branch, compressed branch trace. And then talk about the interface to a, a, an encoder, and then highlight the algorithm, and then talk about some f filtering and the then I will summarize that bit with uh, the encoding efficiency we see. Then I'll drop into why this is important to have in a holistic system, uh, and then I'll give you a quick update on the demo I gave yesterday, and we'll follow up with summaries and, and next steps. So some of you may re realize this, that actually complex systems are getting even more complex, and actually understanding how that system behaves is that not easy at all? And surprisingly, it comes as a shock to many people, software sometimes doesn't work, work as expected. And this, this may be due to a number of factors, like it's been implemented incorrectly, real-time events don't work, or some external uh, event has affected the program behavior. But it's usually because engineers, software engineers, uh, write code with bugs in it. Uh, it's not just, not just software engineers, but hardware engineers too. And using the line, just hire better software guys, it doesn't work. Trust me, I've tried it, and the uh, response was very good. Uh, the, uh, anyway, using a debugger is not always possible because um, in real-time environments, you're affecting the behavior if you stop the system. Uh, and so, you know, quite a lot of the time, you want to see pro uh, um, processor behavior code behavior while the system's running and see what effects it has when certain events happen inside the system. So providing visibility of uh, program execution is uh, very important. Uh, this needs to be done in a sensible way, otherwise if you, if you provide uh, instruction by instruction information, you'll swamp the, SOS, the system and therefore defeat the object of, of, of visibility. And one way of providing this visibility is uh, something called uh, branch trace, in fact, uh, which I'll describe shortly. So branch trace works uh, by tracking the execution uh, from a known start address and then sending out messages uh, when deltas happen in the program. Now, deltas are typically were introduced by jumps, calls, returns, and branches. For instruction sets, architectures like RISC-V, which is a very nice instruction set, because th this works quite well because there are no predicated instructions. So you, all we need to worry about is branches, jumps, etc. So we can take this and only emit uh, bit vectors that says uh, when branches are taken or not taken and only send out addresses that can't be predicted. Uh, at uh, decode time. So if the program counter changes by an amount that can't be determined uh, by the execution binary, only then do we send the destination address. Um, interrupts can be handled similarly. Interrupts usually ha happen asynchronously uh, to the program's execution, uh, usually for, because of some external event. Uh, exceptions can be treated similarly too, but they usually happen, uh, can be linked back to a specific instruction. So I, that means something in this program has caused that to happen. The decoder doesn't, the, the decoder is the, the thing that takes the, uh, the, the compressed branch trace to reconstruct the program flow, it doesn't know when the interrupt occurs. So we need to inform the decoder or send it enough information so it can reconstitute uh, the, the information to give it the program flow. So <coughs> what do we need to provide, what do we need from the core to provide this information? So the interface that we're using is as follows. So we, we have an instruction valid, uh, ex exception and interrupt, then we have the cause of the exception T valve, track values, the privileges, the, the privilege code, instruction address, and the instruction itself. And this is useful, especially in RISC-V, so we can take advantage of things like AI, 
AUIPC and JALRA instructions, and we can combine those because we know we can know beforehand what the uh, address is. So we don't we don't need to send the full address. We can just put it into a bit vector, a bit like the micro ops in in in, in the core itself. For uh, multiple issue calls, uh, we can we provide the same interface but replicated the number of times the uh, number of end ways that you have in your processor call. So the encoder will uh, send a set of four messages depending on different scenarios. So uh, send an update with a branch map with differential addresses. So you don't always have to send the full address. You can send the difference between this current address and the previous address you sent. Uh, a fuller destination address with a branch map. Uh, uh, and then the only time you get the whole information is occasionally you send synchronization, synchronization packets. Here's the algorithm. I don't propose to go through it, but essentially it's very simple. You sit there going through, and then when you see a branch, you update a bit vector to say whether it's taken, taken or not taken. And then when that's full, you send it off chip. The only time, oh, sorry, you send it uh, out. The only time you need to worry about addresses is when there's some uh, unpredictable discontinuity to the PC. And this is introduced by exceptions or uh, indirect, indirect jumps. And so there are, in our encoder, there are four packets, uh, sorry, four messages, and different formats, the different scenarios. Uh, you can read through the flowchart, because uh, it'll be on the slides. So once you've done that, e even compressed branch trace is, is, can flood the system. So in, you know, there is a need for controlling how much uh, bandwidth you how much trace you get, and hence the traffic you get off chip. And so therefore, you need some sort of filtering. Um, the filtering could be trace in an address range, trace start to an end, or sorry, when you hit an, uh, uh, start when you hit an address, end when you hit an address, trace just the privilege, privilege levels, or trace just interrupt service routines. Or you can do tracing at fixed periods of time or start tracing when you get an event from some other module on chip, which I'll show you in a minute, or stop tracing when another module ha indicates uh, an event. So we did some uh, benchmarks. We took the, the, some routines that are fed into Spike. We took the same routines and then fed those into the, into, into the encoder. And this is the efficiency we get. Clearly, it depends on the type of program you have. The more branches, the more unpredictable uh, 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 PC, uh, unpredictable PC events you have, the, the, the more uh, bits you have to send. But I think that's a fairly reasonable uh, coding efficiency. Uh, and the, the sorry, that that does not include any of the overhead that you would need to route it off chip. This is the, what comes out of the encoder. So in a holistic system, so this is a, 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 an SOC. Uh, it has a you know, real SOC, will have multiple processors, different kinds of processors, not just RISC V. It'll have hardware accelerators and custom logic. And what we, Ultrasoc provides is a bunch of analytics modules. And so these modules here are specifically looking at uh, processor-centric stuff. Then we provide a way of taking information that these modules generate. Uh, we t have a, an infrastructure that takes that and passes it around the chip, and then ultimately off chip. And this is showing a, a, a way of getting stuff off uh, via JTAG. Uh, so th this subsystem here would, would be typically used for run control, you know, this, your classic uh, debugging of code running on a processor. But more importantly, for debugging whole SSCs, you want to be able to understand what else is going on the rest of the system. So we have things like bus monitors, which are protocol aware and transaction aware. And so for these things, you could set these bus monitors to say, well, I've seen this transaction happen to this region of memory. I'm just start now tracing uh, the processor, or a RISC-V processor. So it will send a cross-triggering message across our message passing infrastructure to tell the trace encoder to start uh, encoding. So and then we have a bunch of other ways of getting data off chip, some uh, higher bandwidths and some even, even much, much higher bandwidths like the ultra, uh, universal streaming communicator. And then we have ways of storing on, on, on chip in a, in a coherent manner. And then 
Ultimately, then we have a bunch of other analytics modules and message engines. So this is a fully populated uh, SOC with Ultrasoc. Clearly, you don't need all that depending on your target SOC. And another hint is don't get uh, marketing to update your slides because that looks like a huge amount of logic, but it's not to scale. So we showed a demo yesterday which had some, a couple of ARM cores, and we actually had a, a Sci-5 core and uh, Andy's core with the processor interface showing uh, the bus traffic and uh, processor, uh, RISC-V processor trace, along with a whole bunch of visualization from uh, things that we see on the SOC. And it was all captured into an IDE like this, where we have the program standard program stuff on the left hand. We have the program trace in the middle. This is textual information that shows what the packet format is coming out of the uh, encoder. And then we have some visualizations showing what the bandwidth on the buses were. So in summary, determining the program behavior um, is not always possible using source level debugging. So you know, especially in things real time. Uh, understanding program behavior is important, even though I keep pushing that it's the system that matters, but you know, software running on programs do too. An efficient branch trace scheme helps provide this, and we've just uh, given you an example of this uh, with a number of different filtering uh, features so that you can control how much trace comes off chip. And if you couple this with a, a holistic uh, debug and monitoring infrastructure, you get a uh, of visibility and monitoring of a quite complex SOCs. So next steps. So next steps uh, is uh, a task group. So we've set up a, a processor trace task group. It's in uh, workspace. Dot, it's in workspace. So if you've got a workspace. Risk five. Org account, you can uh, get access to it. If you don't, uh, I would uh, encourage you. And if you're interested, I encourage you to contact Sue to get you. Uh, membership of the, of the work group. And then what we're planning to, the charter is that we'll uh, standardize the interface, the encoder, and the packet format that comes out. Um, we're not trying to standardize the algorithm. It's the packet format and the, the, the interface. And then sometime in the future, we'll do, uh, Ultrasoc will do data trace. So that's my, uh, oh, yes, the, the inaugural meeting is tomorrow sometime in the afternoon. It'll be up on the, the, the website. Thank you. This seems in, uh, specific to embedded systems, but on a, say, a Unix system, you might unload or load code into memory, uh, and that would make the traces you know, not relevant anymore. Is that correct? Uh, it's largely embedded, but then you can play tricks with your debugger that will know when you've downloaded code and unloaded code. So that would have to keep track of something like that. Yeah, just a question. Have you looked at using uh, branch prediction to compress the trace more? Like have a branch prediction? The so that is on the roadmap. So, so it would be, I think, uh, it would have to be similar to the branch predictor that you guys might have. No, you put your own branch predictor in the... Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, wrong. The encoder and the decoder have to match. So that's what I meant. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's, that's on the roadmap, yeah. So we should get even better efficiency. Do you want to trace unconditional branches as well, or you prefer developer to restore execution flow from assembler since branch unconditional? Uh, so that's all captured in the bit vector. The only time that we, we send out any, so that's captured as part of our bit vector. Uh, if the destination is not known, that's when we send the address out. So that should all work. Say something about configuration and control. You have lots of these analytics blocks. Yeah, sure. Them on, switch them off, change filters, oh, I don't know if I can go back. Oh, yeah, I can. Oh, it's gone. Uh, so, so for the ultrasonic blocks, we we deal in 
messages, so messages go in, so that's upstream, that, 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 that does configuration. And then we have downstream, that's the data that comes out. So upstream is low bandwidth, downstream is high bandwidth. So um, you, we showed on the demo, we have a USB thing, and we, well, one of our modules is a hardware USB block, which does USB 2 completely in hardware, so you don't need any software running from it. But that's just, that's just a means of getting the packets in. So we also support uh, a way, conventional way, so an, an AXI communicator where you can write stuff in, but it gets converted into messages which get sent into the ultrasonic. So that it's configured at runtime. 